Yesterday, I gave you guys my bold predictions for the 2024-25 NHL season. Now for today's video, I'm going to be reacting to some of yours. As always, when it comes to these videos, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody that participated and left a comment on the post. Even if your comment isn't featured in this video, just know I read every single one and I appreciate all of you guys. If you end up enjoying the video by the end, please remember to leave a like. It helps out the videos a ton and it's the best way to let me know that you enjoyed. And with that all being said, let's go ahead and start off with the first bold prediction. This one comes from Luna Chicken Chell, who says Jonathan Druen ends up with 75 plus points. Druen struggled at the beginning of the season, but once he found his game, he was great. If he can play like he did in the second half of the season, I think this is very possible. I like this bold prediction a lot. Druen is the guy that I'm always going to be rooting for. Really enjoyed watching him live when I was a kid when he was playing for the Halifax Mooseheads. The dude was an absolute monster in junior. If you've never seen any of his highlights from when he was playing in the QMJHL, you got to go check some of them out. It was really nice to see Druen find his game this past season with the Avalanche. For a while there, it was looking like Drew Wen may find himself out of an NHL job. His last few years in Montreal were brutal. Ended up finishing this past season with a career-high 56 points in 79 games, and like you said, there were times throughout the season where he struggled. He's now got a full season under his belt with the Avalanche, and if he can find some consistency like he did the second half of the season, then I do feel like 75-plus points is achievable. I also thought he looked really good in the couple playoff games he played before getting injured. The next bold prediction we have comes from Jonah craft seven who says alexi lafreniere is a point per game player this season i like this one as well i think there's a strong possibility this happens a lot of the fantasy projections that i've been looking at for alexi lafreniere have him around that point per game mark he took a big step this past season finished with career highs across the board 28 goals 29 assists 57 points played in all 82 games the underlying numbers look really solid as well Lafreniere is a player that has slowly but surely gotten better year after year. Sure, he didn't burst onto the scene and dominate the NHL right away like a lot of people expected he would, but especially based off of what we saw from him this past season and in the playoffs where he looked fantastic as well, I think it's only a matter of time before Lafreniere has that real big breakthrough season, and that could be this year. This next bold prediction comes from Devils Are Beastly, who says the Devils break their franchise record of 112 points, which they set in the 2022-23 season. Kind of surprising to me that their franchise record is only 112 points in a season, which is obviously still very good, but I would have thought some Devils teams maybe back in the early 2000s would have had a couple of 120 point seasons. I am very high on the Devils heading into this season. If you watch the video I made ranking every NHL team on a tier list a few weeks ago, I had the Devils as one of the four teams up in the Stanley Cup contenders tier, and in the comment section of that video, there were a lot of people disagreeing with where I placed the Devils in that tier list. I think recency bias is definitely playing a big factor for anybody that doesn't think the Devils are going to be good this season because this past season was obviously extremely disappointing for them. But I've said this recently in a couple of videos and I'll say it again. I think the Devils we see this season are going to be a lot closer to the team that we saw in 2022-23 when they set their franchise record for most points in a regular season than the team that just missed the playoffs. They went out and they addressed their goaltending situation, landing Jacob Markstrom from the Calgary Flames. Markstrom was fantastic this past season on a bad Flames team. He was, I believe, top three in the NHL and goal saved above expected. The defense should be much better. They'll be getting back their number one defenseman, Dougie Hamilton, and they also brought in guys that are very sound defensively, like Brett Pesci and Brendan Dillon to really round out the top six. I'm also expecting their two stud young defensemen, Luke Hughes and Simon Nemich, to just continue to get better. We know this team can score, and I think the defense on paper and the goaltending is looking really good heading into this season. I'm excited to see what this team is going to be able to do. The next bold prediction we have comes from Hockey Legion, who says Bobby McMahon scores 25 plus goals. He's currently slotted in on Toronto's top six has a great shot, and makes effective use of his size and speed. I think Bobby McMahon would definitely be a good pick as a breakout candidate this season. He finished this past season with 15 goals in 56 games despite playing fourth line minutes, and his shooting percentage wasn't even like outlandishly good. It was only 12.7%, which is still solid, but say even if that comes down to just 10% and he appears in 75 plus games and he sticks in Toronto's top six, then I think there's a 20 goal scorer there. 25 to 30 goals might be a little bit of a stretch, but that's why these are called bold predictions and there is definitely a chance he doesn't stick in the Maple Leafs top six and goes back to being, you know, a third or fourth liner. But I definitely don't think this one's out of the realm of possibilities by any means. Moving along now, the next bold prediction we have comes from Francis Bouchard, who says Ovechkin nets 40 goals one last time this season. He struggled at the beginning of last season, but once he started it, he was on a 40 goal pace. And also really appreciate the kind words and I'm glad you enjoy the videos. I was close to including a bold prediction like this, saying Ovechkin would score 40 plus goals in my bold predictions video, 
but then the more I thought about it, I was like, is that even really a bold prediction? Sure, Ovechkin is 38 years old now, and this past season was the first year we really saw a big step back from Ovechkin, but still managed to finish with 31 goals. Like you said, once he heated up, he didn't really slow down towards the end of the season. I honestly think it's very impressive Ovechkin was still able to finish with 31 goals, despite the fact that Washington is a team that really struggled offensively. There were only four teams in the NHL that had a lower goals for per game than the Capitals. Their power play was also mediocre, kind of middle of the pack. I expect them to score more. I expect their power play to be better this season with the talent they added, bringing in guys like Chikrin, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Andrew Mangiapane. So especially now that there's going to be some more talent around Ovechkin on that Capitals team than there was last season, I think another 40 goal season is definitely in the cards for him. Next up, this bold prediction comes from Ryan Purry, who says 15 plus players finish with over 100 points this year. I definitely feel like this one is quite a stretch. There were nine players who finished with 100 or more points in the NHL this past season. Those players were Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, Panarin, Pasternak, Matthews, Dreisaitl, Rantanen, and JT Miller. So let's even just say all those players hit the 100 point mark again, which I mean, there's no guarantee that happens. Who are the six players that would make up the other six spots? I mean, I could see Kale McCarr having a 100 point season. Pedersen, Kachuk maybe, maybe Jason Robertson can get back to that level. Kirill Kaprizov and Jack Hughes are two others that I could see scoring 100 points. So that's six players right there. It's definitely possible, but I just feel like a lot would have to go right. You know, there's going to be injuries. Guys are going to have down years. I think it's probably going to be similar to this past season. We see maybe between, you know, eight to 10 guys around that 100 point mark, but I hope I'm wrong. I think it would be really cool to see 15 or more players reach that milestone because who doesn't like more offense? Well, I guess goalies probably don't want to see more offense and maybe your uncle who's a Leafs fan who still thinks they should get rid of William Nylander because he doesn't bang enough in the corners. Next up, this bold prediction comes from Adam who says Calgary Flames will be dead last in the league. I mean, there were only eight teams that finished beneath Calgary in the standings this past season, and I'm expecting them to be a little bit worse this upcoming season after trading Jacob Markstrom. There's definitely still some talent on that roster. Obviously, guys like Huberto, Coleman, Sharon Govich, Kadri, Weger, Anderson. So I still do find it hard to envision them finishing beneath teams like Anaheim, San Jose, and Chicago even, but I don't think they're all that far off from it either. A couple of injuries to some key players, or maybe they're way out of the playoff race leading up to the trade deadline, and they sell off some big name players. You never know, it could happen. This next bull prediction comes from Hugh Barkers, who says McDavid doesn't win a single award this year. It's kind of crazy that this would even be considered a bull prediction, because there's only a handful of players that win awards every single year, but that just speaks to how insanely good and dominant Connor McDavid David is. The only three years in his entire career that he didn't win a major award are 2016, which obviously was his rookie season and he got hurt, and then 2019 and 2020. Especially after seeing the level McDavid has been playing at and producing at over the last few seasons, it's hard to imagine this bold prediction being correct. As long as McDavid stays healthy and plays, you know, 75 plus games, I just can't see any other player in the league outscoring him throughout the course of a season, so at the very least, I think he's probably a lock to win the Art Ross. Moving Moving along now to the next bull prediction, this one comes from Pierre Luke, who says one of the five worst teams from last year will make the playoffs this year. This might be the most bold of any of these bull predictions that I'm reacting to in this video. That would mean one of Montreal, Columbus, Anaheim, Chicago, or San Jose are going to make the playoffs. I think obviously the two most likely out of those five teams are Columbus and Montreal, and I would definitely give Montreal the edge there, but I still feel like Montreal is at least a year away from being a legit threat to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. There a team I'm definitely looking forward to watching though, especially after the addition of Patrick Laine and having a guy like Lane Hudson who's expected to play a full-time role. I feel like he's going to be one of the better rookies in the entire league this season. Next up, this bold prediction comes from Hayden Hallett who says, Tampa misses the playoffs. In my opinion, they got worse over the offseason. Losing Stamkos and Sergachev was huge, and unless Vasi can be a 930 goalie, they may not be able to outscore their problems. I see where you're coming from here, but I don't know if I can say they got worse. I'm kind of indifferent. I don't know if they got better or worse. I do think Jake Gensel is an upgrade over Steven Stamkos. Sure, they lost Sergachev, who has been a big part of their blue line for a long time, but this past season, he really wasn't. He only appeared in 34 games. He was injured most of the year, and yet they were still able to make the playoffs, and that's on top of Andre Vasilevsky having probably the worst season of his career, which I don't expect to happen again. So I'm predicting them to make the playoffs again. Maybe it's not in a divisional seed and it's in a wildcard spot again, but I don't think it's their time yet to fall out of the playoffs. And now finally, finishing off the video with the last bold prediction, this one comes 
from Sam Collins who says Kirill Kaprizov will win the Hart Trophy. The guy does not get enough credit for what he can do. I absolutely love Kaprizov, one of the most electric players to watch in the entire league. I think if Minnesota can surround him with a bit more talent, Kaprizov is a guy who has the potential to be a 115, 120 point player in a single season. It's going to be pretty difficult for them to put a lot of talent around him this season because they still have those massive buyout penalties for buying out Suter and Parise. But once those come off the books next offseason, I would look for Minnesota to be very aggressive in looking to improve their team. You know, almost 14 million cap space is going to open up that has just been dead cap space for them over these last few years. So I can't see this happening this season because in order for Kaprizov to win the Hart Trophy, I think obviously Minnesota would have to make the playoffs and I just can't see that happening. But Kaprizov is definitely a guy that I think has the potential to be a Hart Trophy winner at some point in his career. I just don't think it'll be this season. So that is going to wrap up today's video reacting to your guys' bold predictions for the 2024-25 NHL season. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, as always when it comes to these kinds of videos, huge thank you and huge shout out to each and every one of you who took the time to come up with a comment, come up with a bold prediction, and leave it on the post. Even if your comment didn't get featured in this video, just know I read them all and I appreciate all of you guys. You all make these interactive videos so much fun for me to make. If you made it all this way to the end and you ended up enjoying yourself, please remember to hit the like button. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoyed and it does help with the videos a ton. And last but not least, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year round, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all again soon.